Chromosynthesis is different from standard mammography because it allows us to look at layers of breast tissue. The way tomosynthesis works is that the x-ray tube moves and it moves in a short arc and multiple very low dose x-rays are obtained. And then that data, that digital data set, can be reconstructed and allow us to look at very thin sections or layers of the breast tissue. So what that allows us to do is all the breast tissue that's in front of or behind a breast cancer that might otherwise hide that cancer is no longer a problem. So things are no longer hidden. Um, and probably the biggest benefit is that that tissue that can be look fairly complex can kind of stack up to look like cancer and fool us into thinking there's a problem when there really isn't. And that sets off a cascade of us having to call patients back and look and see if there really is an abnormality in the breast. So it's really a double benefit. It allows us, by seeing layers of breast tissue, it allows us to detect cancers that we otherwise wouldn't see, and it allows us to recognize or not go down the path of a false alarm. We actually have a long history of um, breast imaging technology development at Dartmouth, and in particular, breast homosynthesis. We were among the first to research the FDA-approved tomosynthesis technology, and were one of five institutions that contributed data that ultimately led to this approval. It became apparent to me that we really were going to improve the specificity of the technology, and to drill down on what that means is the ability for us to recognize benign or normal breast tissue and not raise a false alarm. A, a false positive or false alarm is a patient comes and has her routine mammogram and is told that they have an abnormality and invited to come back for additional imaging or maybe even a biopsy. Now, only a small percentage of women that are told they have an abnormality in fact really have breast cancer. There's a small percentage of patients where the abnormality is much better seen on the tomosynthesis. It's seen more clearly, and we can recognize, again, right off the bat, that that's a benign issue, not breast cancer. I think for the vast, vast majority of patients, there really is no difference in their experience of having a tomosynthesis mammogram as opposed to a traditional mammogram. The breast is still in compression. There's still an x-ray exposure. The fact that the x-ray tube is moving, uh, sometimes patients recognize that, sometimes they don't, but that's really the only difference to the patient experience. There is a, a small increase in radiation dose. It's about two months of background radiation, um, and that amount of dose in the big scheme is probably negligible. Another way to think about it is if you were to take a round-trip plane flight from New York City to Europe, you'd have about the same radiation exposure. At this point, I believe that we're the only place in New Hampshire that is offering tomosynthesis. What I'm showing you here is a patient who had a recent tomosynthesis exam. So this is the traditional mammogram display, and within this you really don't see any abnormality. And I'm just going to click on the right breast here, and uh, these are just benign calcium deposits in the breast. So now I'm going to shift over to the tomosynthesis or 3D part of the exam. And you can see it looks kind of blurry, and that's because um, as we roll through here, we're going to go at one millimeter increments, and so only a certain plane of the breast is going to be in focus. So I can actually run this as a movie, and now we're paging through those one millimeter increments on both sides, and I can stop that process, and then I can just kind of look through the mammogram. And what's interesting in this case is now you can see this area that looks distorted. There's some lines radiating to this which we couldn't see in the regular digital mammogram. 
and this is in fact a small breast cancer that was only visible on the 3D part of the exam. So this is the kind of benefit in cancer detection that we're hoping for.